We are here this afternoon to honor the life of Lois Phillips. She was part of the Clearwater Corps, so it's only fitting that uh, we are here today to celebrate this time and the life that she had, the full life that she had, um, all over this country, really. And at the Clearwater Corps, as many of you know, she taught ceramics here, and, and she was also the social worker uh, when we were down on Fort Harrison many years ago. And so she had an impact on many, many people in this community, those in the Corps here, and the people who came for, for help. And so uh, you're here honoring her life, and on behalf of the family, we thank you for being here and honoring the life of Lois Jean Phillips. Let's bow for prayer. Our God, this is a time when our hearts and our minds are on what's beyond we're able to, to understand and see. We wish we could know what it is she's doing right now. Um, we can't know that, but we do know with assurance from your word that she is with you and she is in your presence. And we have that assurance of that fact, which gives us hope and peace today. Father, as we speak of her life today and speak of memories, those whose lives that she touched, those who were close to her, her family, we pray that you will guide us and bless us. We're here, first of all, to worship you, to thank you for allowing her to be a part of our lives at different, different levels. Bless those who speak and us as we sing and, and celebrate this life today. May it be a time of, of celebrating you and the life that you gave to her that she was able to, to share with so many people. Bless each one who speaks and uh, your word as it goes out today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the word of the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to uh, read from Psalms 23. It was one of my mom's favorite um, passage. So, <clears throat> the Lord of my shepherd, I shall not want. Sorry, I gotta get my glasses on. Oh, there's words. He maketh me to, to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, thou I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the life in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. For those of us who, for whom uh, the Lord lives in our lives, we can also attest to the song we're going to be singing here. What a wonderful day, a day I will never forget. After I'd wanders in darkness away, Jesus my Savior, I met. I know this is her testimony as well, because that was a wonderful day in her life when she met her Savior, and for many of you who have met your Savior as well. I'd invite you to stand, if you don't mind. We're going to sing all three verses and the chorus as we sing, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a
present your testimony today. Please be seated. And uh, Al, will you come and share some memories of your mother, please? First, I want to thank everybody that's coming, that came out today. Um, it really means a lot to me. Um, I see some family I haven't seen for a, a long, long time. And I'm glad to see you guys here. I really am. I miss you all. I wrote a little something about mom. Um, and after I get done here, if there's anybody that would like to share something about mom, a memory or something that happened when you used to work with her, uh, I know we got a couple people here that worked with her years ago. Um, you can either stand where you're at or come up to the mic where they can see you on the, on the stream. Um, it's up to you, okay? When I, when I received the news, news that, my, that you were gone, to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. I was sad and I felt lost. But in my heart, I knew that it was time for you to go. God sent his angels down to take you home. Today I mourn and I honor you, Mom, for your love you had for us all. I look up at the sky and I see the stars and I know one of them are, is, are you looking down on us. We love and miss you, Mom. We, we, we wish you were here today. To those who have a mom, love her while you can. Because today, we wish with all our hearts, our mom was here today. On our last visit with mom, we sat there, me and my wife, and read scriptures to her and played her favorite tunes. We could see in her eyes that she was ready to go home. Now at rest, she is free from pain. You're with dad now together to, again. When I think of happy times, I always think of you, mom. It's nice to think of all the great times we had. Our heart is filled with all the love that, you, that I feel for you. You felt so very lonely, Mom, when, when ever since Dad has, Dad has passed. But you can walk together now before, si, be, forever side by side. Kind was your nature, true were your ways. I treasure your memory, Mom, for all the rest of my life. Till we meet again and we can be family once again. I love you, Mom, and I miss you every day. If there's anybody that would like to share something, um, this would be the time to do it. Um, give me a free, couple minutes, to, moments to think about it. After they got out of school, we always stopped in to see your mother. Your mom and dad were very special people to me. Bless you. Thank you. I remember um, making ceramics in, <laughs> in classes that she would do and how much fun that was. But mostly I remember Lois's sense of humor. She was just fun to be around. And most importantly, I remember the little mischievous um, blink she would get in, in her eyes, and you knew she was up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She always had that look. Anybody else? Very special in my heart. Thank you, James. 
I remember when <clears throat> the things I remember most was what she did with the young people. She had the boys club. I think she even had started to some meetings. But she said to me one day, when I said to her, oh, thank you for showing such an interest in those little guys. I guess that would be then and when they were too young, we can't put that together for two boys. But anyway, it was before their time. You know, I have to say this, I, I, I thought she was um, up in years then. <laughs> but that's because I was young. I didn't have gray hair, I didn't have a pot belly. And she was always very inspirational to me. I think I was Sergeant Major at some of that time. And uh, she says, well, well, why don't you do the boys club? She said, I need a break. So she got me involved that way. But she did it with such um, kindness, such politeness. You couldn't say no. She didn't demand it. She just said, I'm a little tired of it. How about you doing something? She made me feel guilty. <laughs> so uh, I believe that the Lord through His Spirit worked in her in many ways. And that's why we're here today, to recognize her life. Anybody else? Okay. We're going to have a, um, we have a little uh, DVD uh, of her life, and um, we'd like to share that with you at this time.
What a beautiful presentation. This other way. I don't need two mics. I'm loud enough with one. 
Amen. Well, good morning. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. To Al and your family um, and other circles of family, I greet you this afternoon in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you bow in prayer with me? Father God, we pray for the Phillips family and others in their circle of family and friends. Father, I ask you to help them through this season of loss. I reach out to you, the Father of compassion and the source of every comfort, asking you to touch them with your unfailing love and kindness. Be their God who comforts them, come alongside them in their pain and strengthen them so they'll one day be able to help others who will face the same struggles. You are close to those whose hearts are breaking, those who are discouraged. Fill them with your joy, your peace, and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help them experience the love and joy and the peace that are the results of Louis Jean Phillips' life in them, no matter what they're going through. Now, God, as I stand to proclaim your word, I pray for fresh anointing, a fresh enablement, a fresh empowerment of your Holy Spirit. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray today. Have your way, Lord, in us, through us, and among us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's never easy to lose a loved one. So this afternoon, in this few moments that we have together, I want us to turn our hearts towards God, who is the giver of all comfort and the restorer of the souls. Amen? As I was preparing my remarks, I looked up the word eulogy. A eulogy is a speech that praises someone who has passed away. So I really don't have, need to do that for Lois. All I have to do is... Look at her family, her friends, and whose very presence here today is giving her eulogy high praise, which no words can adequately express. Lois Jean Phillips, she was born, she lived, she died, and she went home to a place prepared for her. We will all go through that cycle of birth, life, and death. Yet it takes a willful decision on our parts to go home to a place prepared for us. For those who remain on this side of death, the Bible tells us there is a time and a season for everything. A time to laugh and a time to cry. A time for joy and a time for sorrow. A time to be born and a time to die. It should be of utmost importance to each of us that we live our lives in such a way that in the end, our lives would not have been lived in vain. Whether or not we have lived in vain will not be determined by how much we accumulate it in terms of material goods. For Job tells us in chapter 1, verse 21, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. So when we die, we leave everything on earth. We don't take anything with us. Even the richest people cannot take their money with them after death. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Treasure is linked to the heart. So what does your heart long for? Does it treasure the things of this world like money, fame, possessions, security, success, power, or influence? Or is our heart longing for Jesus 
to be the greatest treasure in your life, both now and for eternity. I know that Lois's heart longed for Jesus to be the greatest treasure in her life. God gives each of us spiritual gifts for many purposes, but ultimately all of these gifts have been provided to equip us to glorify God. One of the gifts that God gave to Lois was the gift of giving back to people without seeking something in return, for she was a cheerful giver. Lois was a social worker for the Salvation of Army of Clearwater, Florida for 20 years. And she started the transitional housing program with the Clearwater Salvation Army. Lois and Albert started a group called the Golden Heirs, a senior citizen group at the Painesville, Ohio Salvation Army. And this program is still going strong after 50 years. Lois taught ceramics at the Salvation Army at Palm Painesville, Ohio, and Clearwater, Florida. I came to know her because she volunteered with our high school marching band, the Blue Stars, for four years as a uniform mom. She loaded and unloaded the band's equipment truck. She helped build the concession stand at the football field, and she ran the concession stand during the football games. Her and Mr. Phillips traveled to all the competitions, away games, and she made sure that I had my drumsticks, I had my hat, my plume. You see, I was her favorite. <laughs> she did all that because it was a part of her gift, and she had a reputation for being a kind person. She had a heart of tenderness and compassion modeled by the desire to be respectful and kind to others. Throughout her life, she was a humble woman who accepted things for what they were and she would want it to be known that she cared for people. I also remember being invited quite often to go over to Al's house before a football game, and sometimes Al would also invite a friend of ours named Greta. There was a little old lady who lived across the street from Al's house, and she would peek out her curtains and watch us as we get out of the car and go into the house. Well, one day, Greta saw the lady peeking out her window, so Greta went over to Al as he was getting out of the car and gave him a big hug and kiss right on his cheek, and woo-wee, those curtains closed fast. <laughs> and Lois started laughing, and she said to Greta, you're going to get us kicked out of this neighborhood. And Greta said, that's okay, you can move into ours. You know, but I thank God for Lois and Mr. Phillips, because they raised Al to not see color but to see the person. And that's how we became very good friends for life. She instilled in Al that all men and women are the same, no matter what color their skin is. Now, the best part of that story was when that lady, she had asked Lois, why are you bringing them into our neighborhood? And Lois told her, because they are my children. Lois was precious. And I do not mean to use it in the way we use it to describe people. I'm using it the way God looks at us. See, for God, precious means valuable. A value that our Heavenly Father cannot replace. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 4, in the Amplified Bible. But let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, one that is calm and self-controlled, not over-anxious, but serene and spiritually mature, which is very precious in the sight of God. Lois was precious 
in the sight of God. And when my time comes, I want to have lived that kind of life that in my eulogy, they will say, I was precious in the sight of God. Death is closer to all of us than what we think. And if you had to meet it today and your life would be over, would you be happy with the life you have lived? Would you be as certain as being in heaven today as you are of sitting in this room today? The good news is that it is still possible for you to be certain. Death is significant only because it marks the end of our opportunity to have an effect upon others for sake of Jesus Christ. The mere fact of being born is a guarantee that we shall one day die. A lifetime in eternity hangs upon the balance of the choices we are making right now during this brief interval that we call life. Death is not something to be feared. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Jesus, the son of God said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me for I go to prepare a place for you. Not only has Christ gone to prepare a place for us, he has revealed to us the road in which we should all follow. Jesus tells us there are but two roads in this life. One way has a wide gate, is a broad road, and that bulk of people travel upon it, but it leads to death and destruction. The other way has a narrow gate. It is very narrow, but that few people travel upon it, but that it leads to eternal life. Jesus himself is that narrow gate. And Jesus issued a call. If anyone wants life, let that person deny himself or herself, pick up their cross and follow me. Because Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus took the punishment that we deserved. He died in our place for all the wrongs we have ever done and will ever do. And our encouragement is that one day, one day, those of us who believe, we will spend all eternity in paradise. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared them that love him. I imagine that heaven is going to be like that, more beautiful than any eye has seen or ear has heard, just unimaginably beautiful. But glory be to God, Lois, as a believer in Christ, is beholding beauty beyond our comprehension, and she has found rest in heaven. For all of us here today, we understand that our lives do not last forever. For the Bible says that our life is but a vapor, appearing only a short time and then passing away. Our days are numbered. Beloved, we must realize in the midst of this time of mourning that there is good news. That through Jesus, death is not the end. We should know that we have eternal life with God. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any, any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more death, no more goodbyes, no more grief, no more sorrow, no more sin, and no more pain. In heaven, we will walk on streets of gold. In heaven, there will be a family reunion 
we will be re reunited with those who have gone before us. In heaven, we will experience peace that is beyond comprehension. We will all be with Jesus. And we will finally see the great love of God in all of his glory. There's a story about a, a sick man who was in his hospital room. So sick that the doctors didn't give him much hope for recovery. And he saw death coming in his room. So death walked in and the man started talking to death. He told death, I think you got the wrong room. But death just kept on coming towards him. He said, death, I don't think, you, you don't understand, you need to go down the hall where people are sicker than me and they're older than me. But death just kept coming towards him. He said, death, don't you have any regrets? Don't you regret taking children from their parents? Don't you ever regret taking parents from their children? Don't you regret taking husband from their wives? But death just kept on coming towards him. He said, death, you are making a big mistake. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Death stopped right in his tracks. Death began to speak to him. Death didn't say anything when the man said, I think you have the wrong room. Death didn't say anything when he says, do you have any regrets? Death only spoke to him when he asked death, have you ever made any mistakes? And death answered and said, I've taken kings and queens to their graves. I've taken presidents and vice presidents to their graves. I've taken politicians and government rulers to their graves. I've taken doctors and lawyers to their graves. I've taken rich people and poor people to their graves. But I did make just one mistake. On that one Friday afternoon on a hill called Calvary, on that hill, I took that man on the right hand to his grave. And I took that man on the left hand to his grave. And then I took that man in the middle to his grave. But when that man in the middle died, the earth rocked and reeled like a drunken man. The rocks split and the earth quaked. Dead men got up and walked around the streets of Jerusalem and justice was satisfied. But that was not the end of the story. That man in the middle, the one that was nailed to that old rugged cross, I had to wrestle with him. I wrestled with him all Friday night. I wrestled with him all Saturday and all Saturday night. But early, early on that third day Sunday morning, he got away from me. He got up and walked out of that grave with all power in his hands. That sick man asked death, who is that man in the middle? And death said, he's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on the fire. He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's David's music. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's balm in Gilead. He's Ezekiel's will in the middle of a will. He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. He's the faithful and the true witness. He's God's only begotten son. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's older brother. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the resurrection and the life. He's bread when you're hungry. He's water when you're thirsty. He is Jesus Christ. Jesus has gone forth to prepare a place for each of us, but we must make a choice 
Because none of us know the day nor the hour when we shall stand and leave this world. Christ died on our behalf that we might have life. Jesus' return from heaven will be personable, visible, and glorious. A blessed hope for which we consistently watch and pray. Jesus will come for his church, an event commonly referred to as the rapture. And at that time, the dead in Christ will be raised and living Christians, we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and be with him forever. Today is a celebration. We celebrate that Lois Jean Phillips was a child of God and now she is enjoying eternity in paradise with Jesus. And for those of us who are believers, we will be able to see Lois again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, fulfill your promise that you will not leave this family comfortless, but you will come to them. Reveal your love and grace to your grieving servants and cause us to hear you say, I am the resurrection and the life. Help us, O Lord, to turn to you in true faith that finding now the comfort of your presence, we may also have a sure confidence in you for all that is to come until the day breaks and these shadows flees away. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. What a reminder of uh, the fact that uh, one day we will all be in heaven. We sang about heaven coming down and glory filling our soul. And now we're going to sing about when we one day all get to heaven. And so uh, I invite you to stand again if you don't mind. We're going to sing all the verses of when we all get to heaven. The words are up there or in your program. Sir? <laughs>
just a reminder, once we finish here, you're welcome to a reception in the gym. We'll show you where that is afterwards. Everyone's welcome to join us. And Al was sharing with me the, the, uh, the degree to which his mother loved the bagpipes. And so we wanted to have that as part of our service today as well. So after we have the closing prayer, as the family goes out, we'll be hearing uh, Joshua Ortiz as he plays Amazing Grace for us on the bagpipes. Let's bow for prayer. Uh, God, we thank you for this day of celebration. We thank you for the celebration of life. We thank you for the reminder this morning, this afternoon, that you are, that he, that, that you are with her, she's with you, and that we have that to look forward to as well. Because one day we, if we're believers in you, will be with her and with you. Thank you for the promise, for the reminder today of what you mean to us and what you meant to her. Bless us each one and bless the family. This is a bittersweet time naturally and our humanness, our human emotions are, are, are there. You've placed them inside of us and, and give comfort to the family and those who are hurting today in missing a loved one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.